Yep, I'm sp I'll speak at this level. All right. Today we're going to talk to who? Just pull it up just a little bit, Desmond. There we go. Put this up here like this for you. All right, sir. Okay. So we're ready to go. Let's right. start off with your name and. Uh, the na the name is Desmond Smith. You were born where? Born in Manchester, England. What year? 1927. 1927, the end of the Great Depression? That's correct. Do you remember the Great Depression? Uh, I do. I remember it. Uh, my father was lucky enough to have a job, but he didn't have the job that he wanted. He, he, uh, he was an engineer, but he ended up being a chauffeur for a very wealthy lady. Really? But the, the good side of that was we went everywhere, okay. right? Because he had a car. Yes. What kind of car did he have? Uh, a Bentley, wasn't it? No. Oh, he, he drove. Yeah, he drove a Rolls Royce. For the for for, for, the, for the for the lady. They, they were a family in the shipping business. They were a Greek family in the shipping business. And so they were very wealthy. Oh, so we would go in the summertime to Colwyn Bay, in uh, North Wales, in Britain, and uh, you know we lived, as they say, high off the hog. So you lived pretty well with this uh, yep. this woman. Yeah. Now, uh, what year did your dad stop driving for her? Did he ever get back to being an engineer? Yeah, during the war, when World War II started. Then he? He moved, to, he moved to his original trade. What kind of an engineer was he, Desmond? He was a mechanical engineer. A mechanical engineer. Yeah. Was he, um, uh, when he got back to doing that, did he, was he much happier? Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Well, who did he work for in the war? The uh, Ministry of War? Yeah. Or do you remember? I can't remember that. We're just doing you some introduction questions so I can get the shot right. Right. It's all about the shot, right? Okay. So um, he was an engineer, and then he, uh, when did you, what, now tell me about yourself. When, what was your first job? My first job was delivering um, newspapers. For what, new, for what paper? Well, uh, well we, it was um, uh, the, the, London, the, uh, the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail. The Daily Mail. And then you were a paper boy. Yeah. Tell me what you, on your paper route, you were saying you used to do, what was a part-time job as a lighting fire? Tell me a little bit yeah, about Yeah, yeah. Well, on Friday, I, the, the district I, um, I, uh, I worked in was, um, um, uh, had many Jewish people. And of course, on, on the weekends, on Fridays, they uh, were not allowed to light fires mm -hmm. and do a lot of, lot of things like that. So I would uh, go in and light the fire and get something like a shilling, hmm. which in those days is the equivalent of a two, um, you know, five dollars. Which wasn't bad for lighting a fire. <laughs> and not only that, I'd, I'd light about 20 fires because they had a heavily Jewish district. Right. They, they're not allowed to, um, to, to light their fires. Uh -huh. But I didn't have to make it. The fires on the whole were made up. Pre-made. I just had to put a mash to it. Yeah. Can we just stop for a second? Can you just push your glasses up your nose a little yeah. bit? Just, I'll hold this. Yeah. Just so we can see your eyes. Oh, that's better. Yeah. That's much better. And right. I'm going to just tighten the shot up just a little tiny bit. Just like, just ever so slightly. Good. You look great, Desmond. So you uh, delivered papers. And then when did you get, is that where you got interested in the news? Yeah. That got me interested in the news. Plus, you were also telling me you got up at 6 o'clock to do that. Uh, I, got up, I got up at a little, little 5.30. I got out and got my papers at 6 o'clock. I had a route with them about uh, 45 families on that route. And how long it would take you to do it? Take me about um, an, about an hour and a half in good weather. And when it's winter and snow, terrible. it's terrible. Must have been horrible in the winter. It was, it was tough, but it's invigorating. Yeah. Keeps you healthy. You still walk to this day, aren't you up early? I'm, I'm up at, uh, the, uh, uh, most mornings I'm up around 5 o'clock. What time were you up this morning? I was up about 5.30. 5.30. I that slept in. I slept in. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. So then, uh, did you ever read the newspapers when you were delivering them? Is yeah, actually, that's a good point. I, I, um, I pause on the route and, uh, and start reading the papers. And then after a while, that got into my head that uh, this might be a nice business to be in. And so then what was your next step from Paperboy to what? That was, what was the next job in the news business? The next job in the news, well, don't forget I was I was actually 14 when I started work, mm -hmm. 
Uh, as a newspaper boy? As a, uh, uh, well, as, uh, no, I was doing newspapers a lot earlier than that, when right. I was about, about 12 delivering or so, them. Yeah, delivering them. But at 14, you could get a job. And uh, so, uh, obviously, I wasn't thinking of university at the time. I was mm -hmm. just getting a job. Mm -hmm. So the first job I got was... Um, um, was it with the, the, didn't you run copy or something? In the no, I, no, the thing I did, uh, um, the, the, the first job I got was um, I, I bought a camera with the money I made. I remember I bought a camera, and then I started taking photographs. Mm -hmm. And from there, I became, I thought, a pretty good photographer. I just loved photography. Mm -hmm. You still do? Uh, yeah, I still, still do. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then when, the, when the war was over, uh, 1944, 45, no, we're going, I've got to go back a bit there. We're talking about. Uh, when I started delivering papers, it was in the, in the um, late 1930s, and then in the 1940s, I, m I moved on. Mm -hmm. I was, of course, at school. In a school, I started trading. When the bombs came, when the war started in, uh, 19, uh, in 1940, in the, in, a, in the fall of 1940, mm -hmm. a, n a whole lot of things happened. One, my father got uh, a job as an engineer, got his engineering job back. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a boom in all kinds, of, there was no unemployment, or near no unemployment. And for myself, um, I began to, um, to, to uh, do a combination of taking photographs and writing. And then by the time I was, uh, the war was over, and I went to university, Manchester University. Uh, and then, uh, and then I, 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 for some reason or other, I wanted to study quantum physics. So I know that was just something I was, I got really interested in. And then, uh, but after about three months of quantum physics, uh, I'd had it. I didn't like it. I went back to photography. And at the time, you could, uh, I could take a course in, uh, in, in photography. So that got me going, did pretty good on that. And then when I, when I graduated from that, uh, uh, I, my very first job was, um, uh, my very first job was, you know, I've quite forgotten what that was. At 14, we were talking about when you were 14. Yeah. I thought you worked in a newspaper and you would run, you'd go down to the printers down Yeah, the oh, that's right. What job was that one? That was the... Um, well, that was the Daily Mail. So when I went, uh, was that in London? Uh, that was in Manchester, Manchester Daily Mail. Okay. The, the 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 worst part of the job was going to the basement where the printing machines uh, were, where they printed the paper. Now, what were you doing at the? I was running. I was I was I was carrying uh, I was carrying copy. So you the were copy that would be, uh, be, be, be that had been written upstairs right. was being set in t in in um, in in lead type, hmm. uh, that would make the uh, would, would then be assembled in in, in fonts, and uh, and and, uh, and and buckled, uh, and then onto the printing machine that would then whiz around, whiz around like that, and print the paper. So you were a copy boy. I was a copy boy. Yeah. And then after, uh, and then the dark, the dark part of that was, of course, sooner or later, all the all the, the kids like me got grabbed. And they they rub uh, they get a, a bunch of of ink, which is a heavy like printer viscous ink. printer's ink, right? And they rub it all over your, your private parts. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you don't see that happening today, you don't think? I right? don't think so. That wouldn't last very long. No. So that was a joke. And then, did you ever get that done to you? No, no I was lucky. I was just was lucky. Or fast. Yeah, fast. I think I think yeah, fast is is a good idea. <laughs> How long did you work for the Daily Mail? Uh, maybe two or three years. And then when did you did you move up to become a reporter? Did you start writing? No, 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 no. But I, I had a wonderful friend, Arnold um, uh, Rappaport, at the paper, and he got me really interested in becoming a journalist. He said, you know, when you leave school, go to university. When you go to come out of university, st 
take something, take something that you would, uh, don't take writing, don't study writing. Mm -hmm. Take something that you, 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 you're just interested in. So I said, well, I'm interested in quantum physics. It was a time when they split the atom, Gary, and uh, the world was very excited about the, this new form of energy. I thought it was just a, a marvelous stuff. Anyway, I lasted about uh, a few weeks, and then I realized it was way over my head, and I, I wasn't going to become a quantum physicist. I was bitten by the journalism bug at this point. Mm -hmm. So from, from that point on, uh, you know, I just concentrated on becoming a journalist. I had a part-time job, and, uh, and then I, I, I managed to get a, a full-time job on the, day, on the, um, the, the, um, the Manchester Daily Telegraph. Remember, this is a great age of newspapers. There must have been dozens of papers on the stand, just, um, just in Manchester alone. So, so what did the Daily Mail do? Was that one of the better papers? It, it, yeah, I'd say it's a middle paper. It was a popular, popular paper. Like the Toronto Sun? Uh, exactly, the same, exactly the same kind of paper. Yeah. And so then, uh, did you used to read the copy when you were a kid? delivering papers, you stop and read the newspaper. Did you ever stop and read some of the copy you were taking downstairs as you walked down with the print? Because you had to move the copy from upstairs to the Yeah, right. Did you ever, is that, like, where'd you learn how to write, I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah. I, I, well, one thing I started with, Gary, I always, I've always kept diaries all my life. So from the, 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 you know, when I was in my teens, I was writing my diaries. Mm. So the diaries, became formed, uh, formed uh, you know, a book really, essentially a book. Mm -hmm. So, so that, was, that was that that section of my life. And now, um, so, he, so you did the quantum physics, not your thing. Uh, is that comfortable? Are you okay with that? Yeah. You can just actually let it go and let it sit on your knees. Oh yeah, okay. Is that better? Yeah, that's much better. Yeah, okay. So you, the quantum physics wasn't working out, so then you said, pitch this, I want to be in news. So then what did you do? Did you go back to the newspaper? Or what was your first article that you wrote? Do you remember? First uh, time you got paid as a writer. Does that does anything stick out for you there? Uh, once, I, once I became a writer, and, and, and um, on the, on the um, Daily Mail, once I became a writer on the Daily Mail, I got a, uh, an unbelievable salary, you know, to, uh, to my mind. It was fantastic. But you don't remember your very first story? Didn't stand out. Uh, well, yeah, it, it would stand out. It would. It would deal with the air rates. Uh, no, tell me what you. Th just, I'm going to just check the audio. Make sure we're doing okay. What, like, uh, what would you have written about the air rates? I can't hear there, Gary. What would you have written about the air rates? What, what would you have written about the air rates? Well, I, it wouldn't be the air rates, but it would be the uh, what the people went went through. What uh, you know the the many tragedies, and, the, and, and then again, the, the many heroic uh, deeds that were being done. It was just uh, astonishing. People um, with their house burning would go to, uh, to the, over to their neighbors to help put out the fire. And you you know, there's a, you, you couldn't have a fire brigade hmm. when the whole city was on fire. You know, everybody had to pitch in, do what they could. A lot of people lost their houses. One thing we all wanted to have, though, uh, you know, we, meaning people of my age, my friends, we always wanted to have our own bomb. We wanted a bomb on our street. No, they bombed the, the blazes out of London. Uh, they'd, um, they'd made a number of tremendous attacks on Manchester, but mostly in the in industrial part of Manchester. And I, I was just about to give up hope that we'd have our bomb when one landed and you have to understand, uh, Gary, this, this, uh, the nature of our house was uh, we had to go down a flight of stairs to the basement, open a door, and run into the garden, which is a matter of uh, eight strides, and we'd be in the garden. We had in the garden the Anderson shelter, which is made of metal, uh, corrugated metal, and uh, and that would cover the the the, the, the there was a sheet of metal over over the top, and then there was a uh, a, a metal 
um, uh, uh, round like that, over which all the dirt was poured, all, it was from the garden. All of the dirt was poured to, to disguise it, and uh, also to make it warm. So the earth would be a, 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 uh, about that much high. Um, Hold even it up so we can yeah, see the about that much higher. Higher, higher. See the shot there. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. About that so much. yeah, about that much of soil mm -hmm. impacted down soil and stone, right? With that, then, then when the rape was on, my father would, would open the metal door, which was a, it was not a, a door like that. It was just something pinned with wood on both sides that just closed the entrance to the door, mm. and he'd stand outside like the commander that he, he was, and watch the bombing raid, you know, and then we wanted to go up, but we could only get the report from my father. Did he wear his tin hat? He, yeah, steel, we, we, he wore a steel helmet, yeah. How did he get a steel helmet? Did, was he uh, they, were, they were just, they were issued. Anybody could get one? Uh, anybody who was uh, an adult. Could have one. Uh, ch uh, children didn't have uh, But helmet. he didn't have a rifle. No, no. Well, some people did. My father didn't. Because there was a...